Hey guys, see which one of me, I'm Shishank from Science Junior. You should, you would also remember the video which I made about the stars. If you don't know that, watch it here, it would pop up here or else I'll link it down in the description. And in that video I said that I'll make a separate video about brown rocks and neutron stars. But well, today brown rocks have one over neutron stars. So today we are making a video about brown rocks. Let's start. So let's get back to how a star is formed. When an old star blows up or dies or just shits out its matter, a gas of helium and hydrogen is formed. This helium and hydrogen is concentrated in the center. These hydrogen and helium atoms dominate the center of the cloud. This forms a star. And if this star is big enough, its gravity will fuse hydrogen and helium atoms and produce energy in the form of light and radiation. Simple. This is the difference between planets and stars. Planets don't have hydrogen to fuse. All the hydrogen is in the star and in our solar system case, also the Jupiter. You would know Jupiter, right? Jupiter is often called a failed star. Jupiter has hydrogen to fuse but isn't massive enough to produce gravity to fuse this hydrogen into helium and produce energy and emit light and radiation and become a secondary star of our solar system. So let's try. Let's make Jupiter 20 times massive than itself. Will it be able to have enough mass to fuse those hydrogen atoms into helium and produce energy? No. Then it will become a brown dwarf. Not quite a star and also not quite a planet. Most brown dwarfs are smaller than Jupiter, up to 15 to 20 percent. But they are 80 times more massive than it because of great densities. Brown dwarfs are first theorized by Shiva S. Kumar in 1960s. This were originally called black dwarfs, a classification for dark substellar objects floating freely in space and which are not massive enough to sustain hydrogen fusion. However, black dwarf was used to refer a cold white dwarf, about which we'll make a video in the future. Because of this, alternative names were proposed for these objects, including planetar and substars. In 1975, Gerald Tabder gave a name to this object as brown dwarfs because he thought brown was an approximate color. Though theorized in 1960s, the first brown dwarf was only discovered in the mid 1990s. As brown dwarfs have relatively low surface temperature, they emit infrared and they are not very good in seeing invisible wavelengths. Now, with advancements in infrared technology, Thousands of brown rocks have been identified. Oh, different types of brown rocks. There are three different types of brown rocks. Spectral class M, class T and class L. There is also one more class called class Y which is the coldest of them around 500 to 600 Kelvin. And the hottest class in them is class M. The nearest known brown rocks are present in the Lumen 16 system at about 6.5 light years. Lumen 16 star system is the third closest system to our star after Alpha Century and Bernard star. Unlike stars, older brown dwarfs can be cool enough that over long periods of time their atmosphere can contain absolute quantities of methane which are not found in hotter objects. Dwarfs confirmed in this fashion are DZ 229b. As you know, brown dwarfs fuse hydrogen into helium but not really fast enough. So the planets around brown dwarf, which happens rarely, would not get enough energy to support life. So you can say that planets around brown dwarfs will not have life. Fun fact, it rains molten iron on brown dwarfs. The first brown dwarf was discovered in 1995, TV1. It was an M8 object in the Placerius cluster. On April 30, 2004, the first candidate exoplanet was discovered around a brown rock. It was 2M127b, discovered by VLT. It was the first directly imaged exoplanet. Yeah, we found an exoplanet around a brown rock. If you don't know what an exoplanet is, 
exoplanet is a planet orbiting the star or brown dwarfs in this case in the Goldilocks zone where the star's heat doesn't let the water boil nor freeze. The water will be liquefied. That's called a Goldilocks zone around a star. And exoplanet are not only detected in Goldilocks zones. They, they are in Goldilocks zones but there are different characteristics that make them exoplanet which can be habitable for life. The universe is ever expanding and giving us lots of possibilities for answers for it, questions about it. We have been increasing our knowledge about the universe out there. But the universe will give us next amazing things to take knowledge about and give us chance to grow as a great civilization. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'll link down some of my favorite ground off videos in the description. Please watch that. If you want any other information about Brown Dogs, if you like this video, please click the like button and please subscribe so you get regular videos from this channel. I'm Shishan for Science Junior and Science Forever.